Hi, it's Mrs Macpherson, Assistant Head Teacher for Post 16 Education and Welfare, talking you through the application process for university or higher education, both at KGGS and nationally. There is a quick reference flowchart in every sixth form student, student's planner and when we deliver the HE talk to students this year, they will have a version that has this year's specific dates on. It's a nice flowchart that's easy to follow, so students know exactly where they should be and when. So if we start from Term 6 in Year 12, I would have hoped that you know throughout this term and next term, students are doing the research that we've recommended, because we know this takes a lot of time. And all this should come together on the 16th of June. On the 16th of June, which is a Wednesday, our students will have a day off timetable. On this day, we will be investigating the whole of the higher education process. We will be looking at how to prepare their application. We will be looking at compiling a personal statement and what makes an effective personal statement. For those students considering um, alternative routes, there is always there is going to be some um, alternative sessions on things like CV writing and interview skills and apprenticeships. And we like to try to make it possible for students who are thinking of applying to university and maybe thinking of applying to apprenticeships to attend some of those sessions as well as the other ones that are strongly linked to higher education. It's really important that students plan to be in school for the full day on that day. So, what will happen? There will be help with starting the online application and there will be time available and computers available that day in order for students to get started on completing it. They will, they will receive help and advice on compiling a personal statement and they will take on the role of a, an admissions tutor so that they can think about um, what those admissions tutors might actually be looking for in those personal statements. We're looking to organise some individual help for early applicants, our medics, um, veterinary science students and dentists, and also those thinking of applying to Oxford and Cambridge, depending on the guest speakers we're able to secure. As I say, we're going to provide a whole day's programme for those who are not aiming for university too. It is true that some students will need to prepare for, book and sit pre-admissions tests and some of these will be over the summer. The UCAT, for example, is an online test that is done at a Pearson Centre, as is the LNAT, and students will need to be preparing for those and it is advisable that they sit them over the summer so that when they submit their application in the autumn they already have the results. What also will be going on in Term 6, so it's summer term, is that subject staff will be preparing subject references that will form the main part of each student's UCAS reference and they will start to consider and discuss predicted grades with the students. And this year we also have internal examinations at the end of Term 6. So there's a lot going on which is looking forward and thinking about the future after May half term. So what about when we come back in Year 13, Autumn Term 2021? During this term, students will complete their application. This is online, as I said. Once that is, has been completed, they will hand a hard copy of that application to their tutors. The tutors will have a general look through it and give them some feedback. Once the tutor and the student are happy that um, they've done everything they can, they will click a button called Pay and Send to Referee. This effectively locks their application so that they can't change it again. A final copy of the application form will go to the tutor, who will then finalise putting together the school reference. The school reference will, al will already be in the main written because it mainly involves um, the comments that subject staff give us, but the, the, the individual form tutor will do a top and tail um, explaining things that the student has done that are extracurricular or supercurricular and a little bit about their personal skills. 
but in the main it is an academic reference and most of it will be completed in the summer term of year 12. So once that is all complete the tutor will alert myself or Mrs Ellica or Mrs McCabe and we will then make an appointment to see that student after reviewing their whole application and um, editing their reference, doing a final edit on the reference. That's what happens next. At that meeting, we will discuss with the students the universities that they've applied to. It is the point at which we will firm up their predicted grades with them, and we will usually give them some corrections to do. For those applying to um, Oxford, Cambridge and um, Medicine, Veterinary Science and um, Dentistry, we have an external specialist who will check the application forms, um, particularly focusing on the personal statements because those personal statements are much more, well, all personal statements are important, but those are pr pr particularly critical. Mrs. Lazell will do a final check where she proofreads everything, checks um, that everything is entered correctly, including examination results, and she is the one who will finally send, press the button to send the application to the university admission service. What do the deadlines look like? Well, the early applicants deadline is the 15th of October. So their deadline to get the application to their tutors will be much earlier, usually only 10 days or so after the start of term. So the majority of the work on their application needs to be completed um, in term six of year 12 and over the summer. And we'll be meeting with them um, later on in the year to, to really um, push them forwards with that. We ask all of our students to try to complete their applications before the end of term one. So this is the week before October half term. This is because this is quite a stressful process. It's difficult, it's tricky. Students are making lots of decisions. We like to get them started with it early, sort of March, April time in year 12, and try and get it finished early so that we can get it out of the way and they can focus on achieving the grades that they need. Officially, the 15th of January 2022 is the date by which all applications should be received by universities for the first look um, and the first chance at getting um, offers from universities. After the 15th of January, it is true that some courses will be full. So that's our target deadline date. But you can see that when we come back after the Christmas break, that is a very short time. Normally, it's only about eight or nine school days after the start of term in January, which is why our aim is to get them all in um, sorted and processed and sent away by about the first week in December. So once the application has been received by UCAS, what happens next? Well, UCAS will acknowledge the application and tell students how to follow the progress of their application online. The universities will reply, no particular order to this, and it always saddens me that the people who are the earliest to send in their applications, all our early applicants, are usually the last to get any offers. There aren't many places that interview these days. Um, those that do are listed there on the slide. And if students do have an interview and do want some assistance with mock interviews, etc., we do offer that service. As I said, some courses involve entrance exams and the entrance exams for Oxford and Cambridge and for the BMAT test, for example, they tend to be um, early November, around about the, the, the start of November in the first week, and they're held in school. We do ask our students to be aware of what admissions test they are sitting and to ensure that they liaise with the examinations officer to make sure that she is aware um, of the uh, facilities that they need. Other institutions and courses, um, once the um, students have applied to them, may invite them to attend an open day and might talk to them informally. And their offer might be dependent on their initial impressions, but it might not. Um, often these applicant days, they call them, they are um, 
more aimed at trying to get the students to put that university as their first choice. So the decisions that you get back from the universities, what will they look like? The first one is an unconditional offer. So this means that the student has a place at that university regardless of what grades they achieve in their A-levels. These used to be really, really rare and they only were only really used for students who had completed their studies and taken a gap year. These days, um, there are more of them and universities will look at a student's GCSE scores, their personal statement, their references and their predicted grades. And if they feel that that student is a pretty safe bet, um, they might make an unconditional offer in order to try and tempt the student to accept that offer. A conditional offer, this means that they're offering a place subject to the students achieving certain grades um, and they will make a three grade offer, always a three grade offer or um, a number of UCAS tariff points. Um, and if you have a look on the UCAS website, you'll be able to see how the tariff points work. For example, um, an A star is worth 56 points, an A is worth 48, and so on. The other option is that a student will receive an unsuccessful from an institution. This is where the application has been unsuccessful. So it might be that the predicted grades are simply too low for the entry criteria. The student hasn't written an effective personal statement or doesn't have sufficient work experience. Or where um, a student has um, applied for a course for which then they're, they're not considered suitable or it's a particularly popular course that year and um, the majority of students um, have put in a stronger application. We'd hope that we don't get many of those. So once all the institutions a student has applied to have responded, um, UCAS will send a confirmation of all the decisions and they will give a date by which students then need to respond to those offers. The date is usually in May or June, and it varies depending on when the student has received all their offers. It is then necessary to select one firm offer and one insurance offer. So one offer that is the one that the students is it's their first choice of university, and then one for if they don't get the entry criteria for their first choice university. You can see, and you will probably be able to determine yourselves, that it is sensible that the insurance offer is lower than the firm offer. What else to consider? If a student is making an aspirational firm choice, so in other words, if they're looking at applying to a university that is generally looking for slightly higher grades than their predicted grades, or they're on target to achieve grades, they should then ensure that they're really grounded when making their insurance choice. They're, they're quite likely to end up going to their insurance university. Every year we have a small number of students who really invest in their firm choice. You know, the university is really good these days at communicating, putting students together who are likely to end up on courses together in, in social media sites. All of that is fantastic, but sometimes students will over-invest in their firm offer. And on results day, if that doesn't work out, they can then be really quite upset. Um, so it's really important that we ask parents to um, try and ground them and, and get them to understand that there's, there is a good chance they won't make their firm offer. I have two sons and both of them ended up at their insurance choice universities. They were happy for both of those things to happen, but you know the likelihood is quite high. So it's really important they have properly considered their insurance choice and if possible been to visit it and they consider it alongside their firm choice. If a student accepts an unconditional offer as their firm choice, these are contractual. So they don't need an insurance choice. They can take an insurance choice, obviously, but they don't need one. It is possible that some students will end up with no offers at all. The most likely scenario for this to happen is, uh, unfortunately, people like medics because they may have been interviewed um, and they may just not quite have made the um, entry requirements for um, any of their four choices. And of course, they have fewer choices. 
If that does happen, there is a system called UCAS Extra, um, whereby they can apply one by one to additional courses. And if that happens, what we'd advise the students to do is come and talk to us and we'll advise them on how, how that actually works. They can wait until results stay though and go into clearing, which I'll talk about a bit later. So what actually happens on Results Day, and I'm, I'm trusting that Results Day will be Thursday, the 18th of August for these students, and that's 2022. But we'll confirm that later on. If students have achieved the conditions of the firm offer, there is nothing else for them to do than celebrate. Usually, UCAS, um, their track system will change early in the morning, between 7 and 8 a.m., so they will probably know before they come into school to, to collect their results whether they have made their firm choice or their insurance choice. If the student has exceeded the terms of their firm offer, so say their firm offer was ABB and they've achieved three A's, they can enter something called the adjustment period. Their firm offer will be held for 10 days. Meanwhile, they are able to look around and see if any universities who perhaps would have looked for three A's from their students have any places available in clearing. And then they are able to shop around and decide if they want to um, change their firm offer. It is important to recognise that students are very likely to be accept accepted on university courses with a near miss, that is within one grade of their offer. However, for really popular courses like psychology at say Leeds University, it is still the case that the university um, are unlikely to take them if they do have a near miss. So again, please do talk to us about the universities that are likely and are less likely to take students with a near miss because our experience over the years with, with candidates has allowed us to um, have some insight into who is and who isn't likely to do that. So I mentioned clearing earlier on. Clearing is a system for students without places where they can apply to institutions who have unfilled places. Universities these days are also allowed to approach unplaced applicants. So if they have places on, let's say, their biology courses, they are able to look for candidates who are unplaced, who, are, um, who were looking for biology-based courses, and um, send them emails and make them offers. It is a bit fast and furious. As soon as results day begins, um, universities' clearing lines will open. And they are telephone lines. Students can ring up and start talking to universities about whether or not they might be interested in, um, in taking them with their A-level grades. Clearing mainly happens online. All of the universities will be on the UCAS website showing whether they have places in clearing. It is, as I say, quite fast and furious, and it's important to get started early. Sometimes students can be a little bit upset because they maybe haven't made their firm and insurance choices and um, will, might delay in taking action. My job on Results Day and um, Ms. Selica's job on Results Day is to try and get them to act quickly so that they can, get, they can make the best out of their situation. Electronically, clearing doesn't actually open until much later in the day on results day. But as I say, telephone calls happen a lot earlier and um, deals are done. It is tricky. It, it is um, a little bit stressful for students. And as I say, we will be here to guide them through it. And it is easy to make hasty decisions. S but having said that, once you have an offer from a university in clearing, you do have a few days cooling off to think about. What I would say was please do not plan to be away on results day because if students do end up in clearing, it is very, very difficult to enter that system and um, get the best out of it if you're not in the country. Places also will go really, really quickly. So, um, you know, the speed of response is important. What I would also say is the process that I've just outlined on these slides and in these presentations, 
students don't need to remember what's going to happen. As I say, they have the quick reference flowchart that they will have been issued with, and there is also a copy of that in their planner. So that will give them the key dates by which they need to have done things. And also, of course, we will be reminding them frequently. Much of this reminding happens through their tutors at registrations and in guidance. So again, it's really important that students are present in their registration periods in the morning and attend their guidance lessons where the majority of this help will be offered. If you do have any questions about this process, um, you feel free to telephone the school, but an easier way to get a quick answer is really to go to the sixth form um, email address and send us any queries you might have. I do hope that has um, thoroughly outlined the process for you, but as I say, if you do have any further questions, feel free to let us know.